Sunday evenings at 5 o'clock here at 3354 San Pablo Avenue in the city of Oakland. First of all, we give thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another opportunity to get beyond this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you by way of this television medium in his name and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as we, as we always do, we'd like to continue to express our appreciation to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. It's my prayer that God will continue to look down upon each one of them individually and that he will bless them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as observers of this program and it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so, of course, we want to continue to express our sincerest uh, invitation to all of you that you might come and have what I would say an exhilarating experience. And that's what you're going to have when you come out and be a part of the Gospel Truth Worship Hour. We sing praises to God's high and holy name to worship him in spirit and in truth, and to sense his divine presence when we meet together in his name. Yes. And so, of course, we uh, would like to continue to express our appreciation to the congregation, the leadership, uh, for this opportunity to be a part of the uh, San Pablo Avenue Church and have the Gospel Truth Worship Hour. We also would like to remind you that we do have a prayer list, and we're working on a program that will include the prayer list as a part of our Gospel Truth Worship Hour. So we're not casting it away, we're just working on a new program on how to bring it about. Uh, there's one name that came to me, a dear friend, a former co-worker that I've known in the past, uh, Frank Davis Jr. So we want to uh, express our condolences and our sincerest uh, sympathy to the Frank Davis Jr. family during this time of their bereavement. And we also want to remind you that the Gospel Truth can be viewed over YouTube. If you go to www.youtube and go to EdCam1, then you pull up the Gospel Truth, and there are many programs that have already been recorded that you can go and see and listen to the message that has come forth from God's holy and divine word. And so again, we also want to remind you in the viewing audience, we know that from time to time, the people have needs. And sometimes some of your friends and neighbors and relatives may come and ask you for something that you can't help them with. Well, if you provide them with the information 211, again, that's 211, that's phone number. They dial 211, they can get uh, childcare assistance, food service programs, uh, services for senior citizens, uh, uh, utility assistance and, and all things of that nature and, and of course services for battered women and, and much, much more. Just remember 211. All right? And then those of you who are still in the labor market, we've seen some good signs and the market is on the men. Unemployment insurance has been decreased. Unemployment uh, uh, listings have been uh, limited. In other words, we're now down below 8%. So that's a good sign, but I know that there are still some employees or some wannabe employees who are still unemployed. So, Eastway Works, one-stop career centers are located throughout Alameda and Contra Costa counties. And you can find the nearest one to you by going to www.eastwayworks.org and then you can come up with the career center that is nearest to you. So if you need those services, they're still there, and they will assist you with those things that you need in order to become gainfully employed. 
All right? So right now, I'd like to go to God's Holy Book of Divinity, and I'd like to invite your attention to the book of John, the third chapter. And we're going to be reading John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 8, and then we will give an explanation and bring the message that I want to call tonight, the new birth, the new birth. And the Bible says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these things, these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus said unto him, well, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you that you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and the heareth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So again, this evening, we want to call the lesson, The New Birth. Now, many people talk about being born again or born, being born again Christians. And, and what they generally equate that to is simply uh, making Jesus one's personal uh, Savior or accepting Jesus Christ in their life, all right? But now, my main objective here this evening is to show you how the new birth actually takes place. Now, I know that sometimes you may hear various television evangelists, and they may say something like this. Well, if you just say this little short prayer, Lord, I repent of my sin, if you come into my life, and then they say with that, we believe you've been born again. Well, to show you the fallacy of that statement this evening, hopefully will help you to know what is required in order for you to truly be born again and be a newborn child of God. Now, when we look at the Bible, first of all, we can see what it does not teach. It does not teach a physical birth, okay? The Bible is not, when we're talking about a new birth, it's not anything physical, it's all about spiritual. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that in this situation, in this spiritual situation, there are two elements required. Now, you can say, well, that's the same way it is in the physical realm. Well, you're absolutely right, because it takes a man and a woman to produce an offspring. Now, what we will do is we will look at the spirit. The spirit is a masculine gender. The Bible says when the spirit has come, he will guide you in all truth. So for the purpose of this discussion, we will equate the water as being the feminine gender. And so what we find is when those two interact with an individual who has come down, given God their hand, God their heart, the preacher their hand, and say that they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then they are now preparing for a spiritual rebirth. And this water here, we're not talking about a spiritual water. We're talking about actual water, H2O. Once an individual gets into that water, that spirit that is there, that an operation is performed. Now again, like I said, the two essential elements for the birth, first of all, we are begotten by the word of God. That's how we are come about. 
So, so in order for an individual to become a child of God, to be born again, then uh, there must be a beginning uh, and the birth itself. And we're born or we're begotten by the Spirit as it works through the Word and born of the water of baptism. Now, Jesus makes it very plain here, and I want you to listen. You can't go wrong on this. If you listen to verse number five of John, the third chapter, all right, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water. Now, in other words, when Jesus is saying except, that means that there's no other way that this can be done. And if you want to be born again, then you're going to have to do exactly what Jesus said. Now, Nicodemus, he was a ruler of the synagogue at night, and he came to Jesus by night. I don't know if he, he didn't want uh, the other Pharisees to know that, you know, he was seeking to know what Jesus had. But the bottom line is he did come to Jesus. He was seeking him. And somebody says that wise men still seek Jesus today. And I trust that you will recognize the need for you to seek the Lord before it is everlasting and eternally too late. So when Nicodemus had the opportunity to have this dialogue with Jesus, uh, first of all, he flattered him by saying, you know, good master, you, you would have to be a man from God because no way you could do these miracles except God be with you. Then Jesus basically made known to him. He said, uh, Verily I say unto you, now this verily he is saying truly. He's saying, truly, truly, I say unto you, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now again, here's that exception that Jesus says. Except you be born again, all right, then there's no way that you can see the kingdom of God. All right, so let's understand. So then when Jesus said you, you have to be born again, then Nicodemus, he was curious, okay? Grant him. I mean, if, if you received a statement, somebody said you have to be born again, then, then maybe this thought would come in your mind. And he asked the Lord a question. He said, well, now, how can one be born again? When one is old, can he go back to his mother's womb and be born again? Again, now, see, Nicodemus was concerned about the spirit, the physical aspect of being born. And Jesus was talking about the spiritual rebirth. And so Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born again? Can he enter his mother's womb the second time? Jesus again said, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit. Now remember, I said already, these two elements are required. The spirit, we know is a masculine gender. And then the water. And so they have to be born of the water and the spirit. So when one goes down in the liquid grave of baptism, then a regeneration, a rebirth, a, a, an individual comes up a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean that this person, if they had a limp, they're still going to have the limp. All right? and, and if they had a lisp in their speech, they're still going to have that. But their spirit, their soul has been cleaned. They have been, all their sins have been washed away. All right? So man and woman or accountable being, we're talking about a teenager or a young adult, we're talking about individuals, human beings are accountable and are required to be born again. And it takes more than just saying a little short prayer, Lord, uh, I repent of my sin and if you come into my life, no, we don't teach that that is the new birth. The new birth is born of the water and of the spirit. And one must go down into the liquid grave of baptism in order to have that experience, okay? And if you need some, some biblical reference, then of course I would uh, invite you over to the book of Acts, the eighth chapter. And I think that that's familiar to a lot of you. And, and you've heard me talk about the Ethiopian eunuch on a number of occasions. But the bottom line is that he had to be born again. And, and what we see in the Ethiopian unit situation? A man who had been to worship, all right? In other words, he had gone to church, and he was still sitting in his car, well, in his chariot, all right? The Bible says he was still reading, uh-huh. Now, some of us, when we get out of church, we fold up our Bibles, and that's it. 
We may not open them again to next week or maybe Bible class day or evening. But this man, he was still studying what he had already heard. Well, God looked down and saw that this man was clean and honest and sincere. All right? And so God said, listen, there's a problem with what I see with this man. So he dispatched an angel and told the angel, go there to Philip, that evangelist, and send Philip over there to join the chariot of the Ethiopian unit so he can direct him in the way that he should go. And so that's what happened. So the angel came to Philip and told Philip, you need to go down there and join yourself to this chariot. So the Bible says Philip got up and ran to handle this matter. He didn't take his time, he got busy, and we need to be busy and enthusiastic when it comes down to taking care of the Lord's business. So Philip went on over and saw the man read him asked him. He said, now, do you understand what you're reading? And the man, again, honest and sincere, okay, humble. See, some of us, we, we have a little position of authority. We, uh, we let our egos uh, get in the way. And, and so uh, if it had been one of us and, and Philip said, well, do you understand what you're reading? We may have responded, well, who do you think you are? Do you know who I am? Well, no, that wasn't the man's case. His, well, he was honest, he was sincere. So he desired Philip to get on the chariot. He did, he got on the chariot, and the Bible says he opened his mouth at the same scripture that he was reading, and he preached unto him Jesus. Now, this is a clear example that you can't preach Jesus without preaching baptism. Clearly, this is indicated. Well, how can you say that? Because the Bible says that Philip began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And so as they went along riding in the chariot, as a result of the teaching that he, the eunuch, had received from Philip, he looked and saw a body of water. See, because remember now, baptism, you can't preach Jesus without preaching baptism. So in the process of this lesson, Philip said, you have to be baptized in water. So when the eunuch saw this body of water, he said, see, there's some water right there. What's to keep me from being baptized? Well, Philip said, well, listen, you're right. You do have to go down in that water. But before you do, you have to be able to accept that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And the first thing the eunuch said was, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, with that confession, that called a halt. Oh, chariot. The chariot came to a standstill. Both of them got off of the chariot, went down into the water. Okay? The Bible says, and Philip baptized the eunuch, okay? In other words, there was no sprinkling there, no pouring, anything of that nature. They went down into the water. The Bible says when they came up out of the water, that the spirit caught away with Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. But the consolation was the eunuch, after being born again, now he's a born again child of God because he was baptized in water. Philip baptized him. That's the process. Not about saying a little, what they call a sinner's prayer. Lord, I repent of my sins. If you come into my life, uh, uh, I'll be doing everything that you want me to do. And then say, well, we believe that you were born again. There's no way, no how, not if you are a Bible scholar, not if you are a Bible student, not if you're just a disciple. You have to know that one is buried in baptism in order to become uh, born again, all right? And so that was over there in the book of Acts. If you will, you can go to the book of Romans. And Romans, the sixth chapter, and the verses number uh, three and four. Just listen to Paul as he says here. He says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So once you come up out of the water, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. 
All things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. And we're talking about spiritually new, okay? Because if you went down an old man, you're going to come up an old man. You're not going to be an infant. You will simply be a born-again old man now beginning to learn that you are a, a babe in Christ. And there's some things that you'll have to learn. And if you are truly a, a sincere individual, you will have the desire for the milk of the word. And that's how you will grow thereby. So, again, this evening, we are talking about the new birth because, again, even I listen to individuals that uh, give out erroneous information, and I know that I, I, in some cases, the individual might be sincere and honest. Uh, uh, well, let's just say sincere because they're certainly not being honest because you can't tell somebody that all you have to do is say this prayer and then you're born again if the Bible tells you exactly how it must be done. And that's why the objective this evening was to show you how baptism is done. All right? And so it's done in water. Uh, we saw that in Acts the 8th ch chapter. All right? And then the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God working through the Word. Uh, if you will, let's go to the book of 1 Peter. Uh, in the book of 1 Peter, you can see the word uh, working, all right? The spirit working in the word, all right? 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses uh, 22 and 23, all right? Let's listen to what this great apostle has to say with regards to uh, this matter of the new birth, okay? He says, seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So again, it is through God's word, his mercy and his plan. That's the process. That's what God said in the uh, motion when he sent Jesus was a means by which we could be born again and enter into the kingdom of God. And that is the church. Mark 16 and uh, 16 lets us know that if you believe and you are baptized, then you have the potential of being saved. Now I say the potential because you have to live right. And if you don't live right, if you let Satan come in and influence you and take God's influence away from you, then you could lose your soul. That's why Jesus makes it clear that you have to repent of your sins, okay? Uh, we all have sinned, all right? All, everybody uh, has sinned, okay? So there's not a person living today, walking on this earth that didn't commit sin. And even the children of God, the, 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 the saints, the righteous ones, we were all something, all right, before we became children of God. And then even as children of God, we've been tempted by Satan. Now, how do you know that? Because even Jesus, after he was baptized, he also was tempted of Satan. All right? So we need to understand that. So if Jesus could be tempted by the devil, you know he's going to be on our case. Okay? Hot after us, on our trail. All right? So now the church is the means by which we can accept what God has given us. He says, but with the precious blood of Jesus as of the lamb without blemish and without spot. All right? So we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the watery grave of baptism. In other words, the Spirit is there performing the miracle along with the uh, element of the water. And then when you come up out of that, you are a born again. You're a new child. So don't let anybody tell you it's just a matter of saying uh, we believe that if you said this little short prayer that, that you've been born again. Because if you didn't go into the water, you didn't get reborn, or you were not a newborn child of God, all right? So again, in Colossians, the first chapter, in the verses number 13, uh, we can hear again what uh, Paul has to say with regards to being this newborn child of God. First, uh, Colossians 1, 13 says, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. All right, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And this all comes about as a result of 
the new birth, birth, being born again as children of God. All right? Now, the Lord doesn't have two ways to do this. Now, you can listen to a man tell you, this is all you have to do, just say the sinner's prayer, and that'll be it. That's not God's way. God's way is listed right here in the book. So there aren't two ways, there's just only one way. And we read that when one believes and is baptized, then they shall be saved, Mark 16, 16. And then once you've been baptized, the Bible says you're saved, all right? And the saved are added to the church. Now just understand that, that's a process. You don't join the Lord's church. I know sometimes we hear we folk say, I join the church, all right? And I, and I know that that's just probably a little Freudian slip. And they, but we have to speak what the Bible speaks and call Bible things by Bible name. And so we are added to the church. And that's how it was done. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, there were about 3,000 souls added to the church. That's the process, okay? So you can't join the Lord's church, but once you become obedient, you will be added to the body of Christ. All right? So uh, we know that the saved are, are added, and then the baptized believer enters into the body or the church of Christ. And so being born again is just another way of showing that one is saved. Now, there's nothing strange or mysterious about this. This is God's plan for spiritual reproduction. That's how it's done. The water and the spirit. Now, if you haven't experienced the water and the spirit, then you are not saved because this is the only way you can be saved. Mark says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. On the day of Pentecost, when Peter and the apostles preached, there were 3,000 folk who came out and said, men and brother, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. So there's no way you can get around this. I'm encouraging you to join us again next week if it's God's will, recognizing that you have to come to the Lord by faith. How do you get this faith? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You must believe what you heard, Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. You must confess or you must repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3. I tell you, neighbor, except you repent, you'll all perish. Confess Jesus and then be buried in liquid grave of baptism. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.